just like we have examples of parallelograms and rectangles in our daily lives, we also come across another kind of quadrilateral, that is rhombus. So if you look around you, you will find many examples of rhombus. For example, if you see this man's sweater, the shapes on the sweater are rhombus. The flag of Brazil, if you have ever looked closely, also contains a rhombus. So in a similar manner, it is also important for us to get a better and clear understanding of this particular quadrilateral rhombus. So let us study about few of the properties of rhombus. Now rhombus, as we had studied, is also a special kind of parallelogram. So it will satisfy all the properties of parallelograms. Both pairs of opposite sides will be parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides will be equal. Both pairs of opposite angles will be equal. The diagonals will bisect each other. And consecutive angles will be supplementary. So all these are properties of parallelograms. Now, this is a parallelogram, as we had studied, with adjacent sides equal. So as you can see from the figure, this side is equal to this side. And these two are adjacent sides. So this is a property that is exclusive to rhombus, which is a special case of a parallelogram. So now we study about the property. The property states that both pairs of opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. And rhombus is a parallelogram with adjacent sides equal. So what does this mean? If we consider parallelogram A, B, C, D, we know that since this is a parallelogram, opposite sides will be equal. So we can say A, B will be equal to B, C. And A, D will be equal to B, C. Now, if we consider a rhombus, a rhombus is a parallelogram with adjacent sides equal. So as you can see in this particular figure A, B, C, D, we have shown a rhombus where D, C is equal to B, C. So I write D, C is equal to B, C. Now what do we find? We find that we can replace the value of B, C over here and we can write A, D is equal to B, C. So this will give us A, D equals B, C or a D equals B C, which means this side is equal to this side. Now we have also seen that D C is equal to A B. So we can also write A D is equal to A B by using this particular equation and this equation. So what do we have? We have that all sides of a rhombus are equal. Or in other words, a rhombus is that kind of parallelogram where all the sides AB, BC, CD and DA are equal to one another. So, this is a property that is exclusive to a rhombus that is a special kind of parallelogram. So now we are going to talk about another property of a rhombus. Now over here, the property states that the diagonals of a rhombus are angular bisectors. So what does this mean? This means that if we have a rhombus ABCD and we have constructed a diagonal of this rhombus, say AC, this would mean that AC bisects the angles which it cuts. Angle A and angle C are bisected by AC. Or in other words, we can say that angle DAC, that is this angle, is equal to angle CAB, that is this angle. Similarly, at the other end, that is at angle C, angle ACD will be equal to angle ACB, that is this particular angle. And this is the property that which we have to prove for a rhombus. So we have to prove that angle DAC equals angle CAB, these two angles, and angle DCA equals angle BCA. 
So let us see how we can prove that. And what have we been given? We have been given that this is a rhombus. And a rhombus means that the adjacent sides are equal to one another. And since a rhombus is a special kind of parallelogram, all these sides are equal to one another. Or in other words, AB is equal to BC equals to CD equals to DA. Thus, all the sides are equal. Now, in order to proceed with the proof, we consider two triangles. Triangle ADC and triangle ABC. These are the two triangles we consider. So, let us see what we can say about them. Firstly, we can say what has been given to us. That is, BC is equal to BC. Since this is a rhombus, so I write BC is equals BC. Because all the sides are equal. Further, what can we say? We can say that AD is equal to AB. Because this is a rhombus. So I write AD is equal to AB. Furthermore, we can say that AC is the base which is common to both the triangles or in other words, I can write AC is common for both the triangles ADC as well as ABC. So what have we now obtained? We have one pair of sides equal, another pair of sides equal and AC as the common side. So now I can say that triangle ADC is congruent to triangle ABC through which rule? Through the side, side, side rule of congruency. Thus we have ADC is congruent to ABC through the SSS rule. Now again let us consider these two triangles. Over here, if I consider this angle and this angle, I will be able to say that angle DAC, that is this angle, is equal to angle CAB, this angle. Why? Because these two angles are corresponding paths of congruent triangles. Now, since they are corresponding paths of congruent triangles, these two angles will be equal. Thus, these are equal through CPCT. And in a similar manner, we can say that angle DCA will be equal to angle BCA. Again through CPCT. So I write angle DCA is equal to angle BCA through CPCT. And thus we find we have been able to prove what we originally set out to prove. That is angle DAC is equal to angle CAB and angle DCA is equal to angle BCA. Thus AC which is a diagonal is indeed the angular bisector for A and C. In a similar manner BD the other diagonal will be the angular bisector for B and D. Now I have a problem for you. The problem is a very simple one and it states that ABCD is a rhombus where angle A that is this angle is equal to 30 degrees. And what have we been asked to find out? We have been asked to find out the measure of angle DAC given the condition that AC has been joined. So let us see how we can calculate this. So it is given to us that AC is a diagonal and what do we know? That in a rhombus a diagonal is the angular bisector. So ABCD is a rhombus and AC will be the angle bisector for angle A as well as angle C. Now it has been given to us that angle A is equal to 30 degrees. So since the entire angle is equal to 30 degrees, what can we say is the value of angle DAC? Angle DAC will be given by half of angle A. So since DAC is half of angle A, if I replace the value of angle A with 30 degrees, what do I get? I get the value of DAC as 15 degrees. 
thus dac is equal to 15 degrees and that is the measure which we wanted to find out that is the value of this angle so we have easily calculated the value of dac with the help of the property that we earlier proved 